Ladies and gentlemen, Happy New Year. So this is going to be my full detailed review of Travelers. If you haven't watched the show yet, make sure you check my no spoiler review for a recommendation. Binge watch it on Netflix before you actually go through this review. But in this video, I'll be discussing the top moments, arcs and reveals on the first season of the show. And of course, the questions the show has managed to answer over the course of the first season and the ones that are left unanswered as well. I believe the show is pretty good, the performance by the actors is pretty decent and the storyline is amazing with a lot of potential. So without further ado, here is a list of top moments, theories, questions, opinions and reveals on the first season of the show. Number 15. So Netflix has been on a roll with its Marvel series franchise and a show like Stranger Things. Travelers, in my opinion, is most definitely up there with Stranger Things. It presents us with time travel through consciousness transfer across time into host bodies rather than our usual time travel with a time machine or a Legends of Tomorrow style wave rider. The first episode of the season focused on the team of travelers that we come to know later on as the lead characters of the show, giving us a quick glimpse of their lives prior to the consciousness transfer which seems to happen at the host's predetermined time of death. So pretty much before a host is dead and right as their consciousness is leaving their bodies, the new consciousness of the traveler swoops in and takes over. But number 14. The cast of the show in my opinion is one of the better ones on TV in 2016, even though a lot of them are new faces with so little acting credits to them. However, they all seem to show a lot of talent when it comes to portraying their roles. At the same time, there are a few actors in the show with a good amount of acting history to them. Patrick Gilmore, who portrays David Mailer, is known for his roles on Battlestar Galactica and Stargate Universe. Jennifer Spence, who portrays Grace Day, is known for her roles on Continuum and Stargate Universe as well. And of course we have Eric McCormick, who has come a long way since his role in Will and Grace, passing through Trust Me and Perception on his way to becoming the lead actor on Travelers. But number 13. The show gave us multiple Traveler teams. Initially, it seemed like all we're getting is this one team composed of married FBI agent Grant McLaren, young mom suffering from domestic abuse at the hands of her cop husband Carly Shannon, 17-year-old bully Trevor Holden, young mentally handicapped Marcy Wharton, and young heroin addict Philip Pearson. But they just keep coming in almost every episode. Consciousness being traveled into more bodies for more missions. And even better, this team is not even the first. They are one in a list of many that have made the trip before them. And as I just mentioned, they're definitely not the last. But number 12. While I've watched every single episode of Perception and have been a big fan of Eric McCormick throughout my view of the show, my favorite performance on Travelers happens to be that of Riley Dolman, who portrays the role of Philip Pearson. The actor does have a two episode Stargate Universe credit to his name, but that is not it. His character is just very well written, and as I mentioned in my no spoiler review, his struggle with the heroin addiction that his predecessor's consciousness brought upon the body he now occupies makes for an amazing portrayal as he gives into it at times and fights it at others. No second to his performance comes Jared Abrahamson's performance as Trevor Holden, who again occupies the wrong body, the body of a bully. His character is most definitely different than his predecessors. He's kind-hearted and he's out to save the lives of others who would otherwise die and end up being hosts for new transfers from the future. But more importantly, it's not only these two who happen to change the lives of the bodies that they have taken over, but rather the entire team. They end up caring for the people around them and they start caring for more than just their mission. Marcy's arc is particularly touching as she falls in love with Mailer, the social worker responsible for the case of her mentally handicapped predecessor. When Marcy finds out she might be moving on from her current host to be replaced by a new consciousness, the pain she displays is amazing, the emotional pain that is. The most touching scene is when the switch happens and she meets David. You must be David, I'm told we're close. That right there is about the saddest, most robotic statement you could ever hear from someone you care about. It all boils down to that point in the penultimate episode of the season where Grant discusses Marcy's situation with Carly. She has a life in the 21st. We all do. That statement happens to say it all and tells us this team is about a lot more than all others. They are not just brainwashed to perform and execute missions. They are humans deep down who care about a lot more than orders. But number 11. Carly's character was extremely interesting all the way as this rush of motherhood came to her ending up fighting her husband or the husband of the original host over custody of her child. 
Her character development was particularly interesting. She comes from the future with feelings for the Traveler, who now occupies the body of Grant McLaren, but however ends up somehow continuously consumed by her fight for her child. The child of the original owner of the host body, that is. On the other hand, Grant ends up having to deal with his marriage, which seems solid the very first time he meets his wife, but however ends up slowly unraveling as she starts suspecting he's cheating, and somewhere down the line suspects as well he's not who she thinks he is. But number 10, we discover that the director who has been sending travelers into the present is an artificial intelligence, and in the very last episode, Grace informs the team she reset the highly advanced AI, rebooted its OS, to avoid its corruption. The director is also revealed to have been running every aspect of people's lives in the future for ages. But number 9, after what Grace did bringing the director offline, chaos is probably taking over the future as indicated by Grant or in the words of Grace, a temporary power struggle. She informs them about the faction, a future group who don't believe in the Grant plan and according to Grace they happen to be the ones who abducted and tortured the team. That is at least what she said. She informs them they did so to test the team's loyalty, making sure they couldn't complete a mission that the faction doesn't agree with. Grace then informs them that is how she realized the faction managed to influence some of their agenda, leading to her decision to come to the 21st century to stop them. Grace also informs them that the director will come back online more secure than ever. Should we believe her? I guess we should considering how Alice shared the same opinion as her when it comes to the director possibly being corrupted, while objecting of course to her ego and methods. Believing the director had a contingency plan which boiled down to his very own mission in the present. His mission is revealed to be building a machine, a quantum frame that would allow the director to transfer itself to the present if things get completely out of control in the future. But number 8. The faction seems to be a big deal, attempting to take down Grant's team and Grant himself including the usage of Officer Boyd to take him down. It seems like they're going to be the big bad villain of the show's upcoming season if the show does get renewed. Now while Boyd seems to have let Grant go after staging him shooting her and making a run for it, everyone seems to be in danger. A man has a gun pointed at David's head forcing him to make a call to Marcy before she snipes him dead, saving Mailer. Grant asks Catherine to get out of town before she's put in danger because of him, and Marcy does the same with David. Jeff is in a very bad position after he has had to shoot the young girl assassin to save Carly. Everything seems to pick up fast in a very fueled, packed and amazing season finale. But number 7. As the team, Alice and Grace try to determine whether the director is actually the one who ordered the destruction of the quantum frame in a text message to Trevor, we also realize that the future the team came from was one in which there was no faction, there was no divide. The reveal is made that things have changed, not everyone is loyal to the director anymore and the faction has risen from the ashes, demanding that people are ruled by themselves rather than an AI making all the decisions for them. As the season is coming to a close, the team is split, some of them including Grant are defending the director, claiming it is what saved them from extinction, and Carly, before raising her gun in his face, asks him if they should all execute the director's instructions without questions, which he agrees to. She had orders as well to kill him, Orders that came in as well through a text message from the director. In the very last moments of the season, Alice ends up shooting Grace, a shot that goes through her abdomen and out of her back and gets Trevor as well, standing right behind her. He does so to stop them from stopping the quantum frame. But in the end, we do realize the quantum frame was indeed a bad idea when it comes to the director. That the final order was to destroy it as Alice gets to transfer consciousness and relays the very same orders delivered via text earlier to Trevor. The very last moment of the season sees the FBI agents led by Forbes swarming in, guns blazing and stopping Grant from destroying the machine, leaving us with one hell of a cliffhanger going out of the first season of the show and hopefully into the second. Now number 6. With all these major highlights of the first season being defined, there are a few questions that make you wonder throughout the season. The first being the access the different future teams and individuals have to future technology. How do they get that in the present? I guess that's a question I kept asking myself throughout the second half of the season, but after I was done watching it and I started thinking about it, the only answer I could find is inherent in the fact that it seems the travelers are chosen with so much care. And it is in the way their teams work in a very integrated manner that we can find an answer to this question. 
While the traveling happens through transfer of consciousness rather than physical time travel, this transfer comes with the know-how of the futuristic technology we end up seeing. The only explanation as a result is they kind of end up building that kind of technology in the present, just like Ellis did with the quantum frame. But number five, Grace did inform the team that they were kidnapped and tortured by the faction, but is that actually the truth? We did get no confirmation to that effect, and it is possible that it was all set up by the director as some sort of test to the team. I guess we'll find out in the upcoming season. But number four, while I did mention earlier the faction does seem to be introduced as the possible major villain of the possible second season, does anyone else believe that might not be true? Coming to think of it, the director sounds like an AI that has grown in intelligence, it has become extremely controlling and oppressive. More importantly, the director seems to be a trigger-happy AI sending kill orders left and right throughout the entire season, and even if those who happen to be heroes on the show so far believed in that AI all along, doesn't necessarily mean that AI is out looking for the good of mankind. But number three, who's dead and who's not? I'll take a shot in the dark and guess Grace might not make it into season two. However, Trevor's status among the living is still up for grabs. Will he survive the shot he took at the very end of the season? Well, I sure hope so. The character, as I mentioned early on, was one of my favorites and was very well portrayed. The struggle within when it comes to both him and Philip were some of the most interesting subplots of the first season. So hopefully we'll see him again if and when the show gets renewed. But number two, will we see David again? Are he and Marcy going to pick up right where they left off before she had her switch of consciousness? Is Grant falling for his wife? Now the relationships are not just about the romance on the show. They have been throughout the season integral to the development of all the characters, so when I ask these questions, I'm not looking for a romantic side on the show, but rather the human side to the Traveler's team that the show has been building up throughout the entire season. I guess that question remains unanswered for now, even though it seems Grant is actually falling for his wife. Last but most definitely not least, number one. Should we question who Walt Forbes really is? It could all boil down to Grant's whereabouts being known because he seems to always use his FBI provided and tracked vehicle wherever he goes, possibly leading to the arrest of the team at the very end. But then again, it is possible Walt is nothing but a host body and so is the team that kicked in at the very end of the season. It was made clear that the faction has also found a way to transfer consciousness across time. And if that were to be true, who is to say that Walt isn't one of the faction's travelers? That are, of course, his assault on the travelers, along with the other FBI agents, is a product of both his investigation and the tip he might have been given by Catherine in the final episode after she has been warned by Grant to leave town so no harm would come to her. All in all, and as I mentioned in my no-spoiler review of the show, I rate the first season of Travelers with a solid 8 out of 10 if not more. I'm also planning to binge watch Victoria the Crown and the Young Pope as I mentioned before over the next couple of weeks so if you're interested in seeing reviews of any of those shows let me know in the comments. Do let me know as well what you thought of the first season and if you think there are any more unanswered questions that I've missed in my review. And as usual, if you like this video, let me know by dropping me a like. And if you want to see more where this came from, let me know by subscribing as well. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you soon.